Incline bench press. Usually when I train chest, this is probably, in fact, not probably, this is the first exercise that I start with. I think the king of all exercises when it comes to chest is the flat bench press. But for me, it hurts my shoulders too much, aggregates my elbows, I get a lot of tendonitis, and you always have that tendency to go a little bit too heavy when I'm doing flat bench. So this gives me more of a reality check, keeps the ego in check, and make sure I'm focusing more on the chest muscle rather than just moving the weight A to B and trying to hit crazy numbers. So with this, the numbers, I stay, I, with this I like to keep the numbers a little bit moderate. Now first things first, whenever I do this exercise, I always make sure the bar's straight. So if it's already on the rack, just give it a nice turn, especially if it's a different gym. This is a new gym to me. I don't always train in here. So I'll make sure the bar's straight, there's no bends in it. Obviously if it's a bent bar, get one that's not bent. Knurling on this, prefer, for me I prefer, 28 mil knurling. I think this is a 30, you sometimes do get 32 mil knurlings. I don't like how they feel in my hand, so I opt for a 28 mil knurling, but again, this is about 30. So, when it comes to the seat, now, each machine is gonna be different depending on which gym you're in. Sometimes they have those foot placements in front that go like this. This one is off, obviously off the floor. I actually prefer it like this. Now, when I'm looking up at the bar, I want this to be around my eye level. So if this is at my eye level like this, then I know when I'm pressing, the catchers aren't gonna knock. Sorry, the ball's not gonna knock the catchers. If the catchers are really out, like over here, then obviously shuffle down a little bit more. So when you're pressing up, you're not gonna catch at the top. So what I do first things first is I get the bar empty bar, quite a, a narrow grip and I bring it down to the top chest and I'll just do 10 reps like this. Very simple, just to get a bit of movement. I've already done kind of a, uh, a shoulder work, uh, sorry, I've already done a shoulder warm up, which you can find on YouTube. And what I do is I get the bar, still holding the bar in my hand and I get a bit of a wider grip over here. I'll bring it down and I'm just squeezing rolling my ro rolling my shoulders forward and back as you can see my elbows from the side and all i do here is i just pull my elbows back forward back like this i'll do another 10 reps just with the bar keep it nice and simple over here just 10 reps if you've warmed up correctly this should be quite easy for you to touch your chest i know if you haven't got the movement if you haven't got the mobility so touch your chest over here and work on that first. Now literally just sit in this position for about 30 seconds, elbows back. This is an exaggerated stretch and I'll explain why I do this. So the reason for that exaggerated stretch or my theory behind it is this. You're never ever gonna be in that exaggerated position. You're never gonna be like this. So if we warm up in this kind of a motion, and the bar with weight or with load is never going to be there and we're only working from this kind of a range of motion the idea is but it's not just an idea i've actually been doing this for many years over 20 years of bench pressing and i've never been injured once touch wood i can't see any wood anywhere but you get the point i'm trying to say so the whole idea of this is and a lot of the other exercises you'll see i always try and stretch beyond the range of motion so for shoulders, if I'm doing a shoulder press over here, I will stretch all the way here, which means I'm never ever gonna do a heavy weight this low, I'm never gonna do that. So that, therefore, in my mind, the theory is, if we're gonna do the heavy weight here, and we stretch from here, we're warmed up in this position, but we're never gonna go to this extreme motion. Therefore, this should be very easy on our shoulder joints. Obviously, the weight's gonna be heavy. That will reduce the risk of injury. And I believe you'll never get injured if you exaggerate the warm-up. As long as you exaggerate the warm-up, you're never gonna get injured when it actually comes down to doing the proper set, especially the heavy sets. So I, now I'm gonna do 20 more kilo either side, which is 60 kilo. I like to use the bumper plates. Now, if you are obviously a guy who's not as strong as this, warm up with what is more comfortable for you. So I always say to people, warm up with like your 50, 50% on your uh, 10 rep max or whatever it is. So if I can do 120 kilo on the incline bench for 10 reps, 60 kilo is, is, is okay for me to warm up on. And I've been doing this so many years. 
this is like automatic now, you know, <laughs> 60 kilo on the bar is, is very basic. But I always warm up with the bar first because you have to do the side to side motion. And as you're doing the side to side motion, oh, actually, I didn't show you the side to side motion. So I'm just gonna bang this up quickly and just show you. Let me just show you exactly what I mean by that. And this is another thing what I meant by doing the, the range of motion exaggerated, and it is this. So a wide grip again, and what I'll do is, I'll press, I'll press up one arm at a time. Now, my arm is never gonna be more extended than that ever. It's never ever gonna go past this range of motion. But if we warm up in this, we're not gonna get injured. So I just do like 10 to 15 reps either side. Very simple, like this. Remember, it's only the bar. Another thing this does as well is your wrists. This warms your wrists up, warms your elbows up, warms your shoulders up, your chest up, everything. And hold that at the bottom. Bounce it about a little bit if you want. Just get everything nice and loose. And now we're gonna do the first warm-up set with 60 kilo on the bar. You should always use collars as well. I'm not gonna use collars over here because I can't see any, but you get the point. I'm not really gonna go heavy today. But always use collars, especially when you're in certain countries like England, we're not in England at the minute, but if you're in England and you're training in the winter months, the bars get really condensated. And as you're sliding the weight on and off, you can always see that like, I know this, this is not gonna slide off because it's already, there's some friction there. So if I was in the UK, and it was really cold outside and it was warm inside of the gym and there was a bit of condensation on the bar, I'd have to literally just push it like that and it'd go all the way on. Then you know, get the collars on the bar. There's a little expert tip for you. So I'm not gonna use any collars over here, but first warm up set. So there's some weight on the bar now, so it's time to get a little bit serious with grip, hand placements. Put your arms down to your side, get your arms up like this. Now that is where is my natural shoulder width grip. I'm just gonna grab that a little bit there. That doesn't feel too comfortable to me, so I'm gonna come out a little bit. The whole idea of the grip is this. When you're at the bottom, what you don't want is this hand wrist to be in this position. It's gonna cause a lot of torque on your elbow, your wrist is gonna hurt, and also your shoulder. You want it to be directly below the bar, right at the bottom, that's where you want it. Sometimes if you're powerlifting, you're going more for like, heavy maximum weight, low range of motion, less range of motion because you're powerlifting. Some people, sometimes you might see powerlifters holding it a little bit wider and that's so they're just in a bit, a bit of a better position and so they can press out low range, less range of motion so they can use more weight. I think recently that's been banned as well. There's been a lot of shit in powerlifting where things are just moving from A to B and all these contortion artists have come in and you know, you've seen it, I'm sure just Google, you know, two inch bench press or something and some people are so fucking flexible they use the widest grip possible chest out they've got this big arc in their back and they're literally just doing this so it's a bit of a cheat we're not here to do that i never do this we're training chest over here so make sure at the most powerful position at the bottom of the of the rep you're here you don't want to be there and you don't want to be there figure it out it's going to come natural to you another thing as well from the side let's say the ball's here from the side don't use that suicide grip it's called that for a fucking reason, okay? We ain't doing that, so don't do this. Don't also grab the bar and do this. You wanna grab it and you wanna be here. That's where you wanna be, as if you're throwing a punch. This is the most natural path for your elbow and your wrist and your knuckles. That's where you wanna be. It might be a slight bit turned back because you've gotta hold the bar somewhere, but this is what you wanna aim for. You don't want it to sit there like this. You don't wanna do that over time. This is gonna cause a lot of pressure on your wrist and from there, it goes down to your elbows and from there, it goes to your shoulders and before you know it, you're a fucking mess. You're gonna need physio treatments and all that kind of shit and you're not gonna know what's up and you're gonna be one of those guys that are my age and like, oh, I used to bench heavy or I used to bench and now they're coming to the gym with fucking elbow sleeves on and wraps and all this fucking shit because the elbows are fucked, the wrists are fucked, the shoulders are fucked and they don't know how to do it, they don't know what happened and it was something as simple as just coming to the gym and holding the bar in the wrong fucking placement. So get a nice grip on the bar, squeeze the bar, unrack, and we're coming down to the upper pec. Now I'm just gonna do eight repetitions over here. I personally go, this, this first rep, this sorry, this first set, I do quite slow and methodical. 
thinking about what I'm doing down and up. And on the last rep, I just hold it here and I just sit back. Let my elbows, if you come to the side a little bit, you'll see my elbows, I'll bring them forward like this. So I've got my elbows in an extreme motion forward. Remember, it's always about those extremes. If we're training through those extreme ranges of motion, we're never gonna do this when it comes heavy. And then I'll pull them back as well. So now they're all the way back. I can feel that stretch in my chest, in my shoulders, in my hands, I can feel that. I'm just gonna hold that for a good 10, 15 seconds and then push, press the bar up. So now I'm actually fully warmed up, ready for the workout. I'm gonna do one more warm up set on the same way. But now the way I'm gonna do this, this set, as you'll see, is gonna be all about explosive power right from the bottom. So down and explode up, that's what it's gonna be. Now there's not a heavy weight on here. It's a very light weight for me to use. I could probably do 50 repetitions on this way. That doesn't mean I'm just gonna be bouncing it off my chest. Everything is very methodical. Everything is done with purpose, with intent. So you bring the bar down slow and explode. Now you'll see when I'm doing this repetition, it looks like I'm going really, really fast. When I'm, going, when I'm doing the heavier sets, in my mind, on my body, I'll be doing exactly the same thing as I'm doing for this set. The only difference is gonna be those repetitions are gonna look a lot slower because there's more weight on the bar. But in my mind, in my body, I'm doing exactly the same thing. So when it comes to warm up sets, one minute is more than enough rest. We're gonna go straight into it now. What you'll see here, I'm gonna aim for speed. Down slow and explode up. Now the last one I just like to hold at the bottom. That's an old habit from powerlifting. The reason why I do that is I'm not training for strength at the minute, but I always like to always keep a couple of reps in the tank. Depending on your program, that's gonna change. So don't always do this, what I'm doing. This is just a mental checklist, a mental check thing that I always do. I have done for many years. If you ever see me in the gym in the last repetition, especially if I'm in a new gym, I always, like, even on my heaviest set, on my heaviest set, my heaviest rep, on my last rep, I'll hold the ball at the bottom. And this has happened quite often. But the gym goers will be paying attention to what I'm doing. And it's great that they do this and they, they run over. And I'm like, no bro, it's okay. I've got it under control. This is just how I train. So you don't have to do that, but it's something that I like doing. And that also improves my range of motion, gets me comfortable in that bottom position so that when I do come to the heavier weights, it's not even a thing. Now, I've done one warm-up set there. Well, two, technically two warm-up sets. I'm gonna do one more warm-up set. Now, today's workout is three sets of eight repetitions for me. Remember, if you want those programs, go over to fadihussein.com. There's plenty of programs on there. Fat loss program, weight gain program, muscle building program, TRT program, all sorts. Anyway, I'm not gonna keep plugging my videos, but you are watching my channel. And if you made it this far, give it a follow, give it a subscribe, make a comment down below, give me a like. You know the fucking situation. You know what you need to do. We're all trying to grow out here. Okay, so now, another thing as well. If I was to train, let's say I come to the workout to do three sets of eight repetitions. I will never do 20 repetitions as a warm-up because there's no point, there's no reason for me to do that. So what I'll do is, I'll do eight reps in the warm-up. Every single set, I will do eight reps. Programming my mind, prepping myself to know that I'm wanting to do eight repetitions. If I was to do three sets of five in a warm-up, sorry, in a workout, I would do no more than five repetitions throughout the warm-up because there's no reason for me to do 20, 30 repetitions. I'm losing the bar of the path. I'm losing the mind-muscle connection. I'm losing the, you know, the mindset that I've come to actually train in that range of motion, or sorry, in that rep range. So always, always have that in mind. What day is, look at your top sets. If your top sets are three sets of two, then fucking do two repetitions with the bar, two repetitions, just do more working sets. So if I had a program, and I don't have a program at the minute, where it's three sets of two, sorry, five sets of two, which is what I used to do quite a long, well, fucking hell, maybe seven, eight years ago, what I would do is I'd warm up with the bar and I'd do five sets of two. I'd put a plate on, I'd do three sets of two. I'd put two plates on, I'd do two sets of two, and so on. I would never ever do more repetitions than what I'm programmed to do on that day. That might be different for many people. 
for me, it's a good mindset, it's a good checklist. And this is what I'm going to go into the gym to do, so this is what I'm going to do. You can do less though, you can always do less. So today I'm doing three sets of eight. This is my second or third warm-up set, and I'm only going to do five repetitions just because I want to feel it. So explode again. One other thing to note as well, your feet need to be flat against the floor, like this. That's where I find I get more of my power, like this. You might have seen some guys do this motion on their tiptoes. The only problem with tiptoes for me is there's just too much moving about. So for me, it's always flat feet, and then I know exactly where I'm doing. And remember, when you're doing a checklist, it's always from the, from the ground up. So make sure your feet are planted, your ass is planted, your butt's down. You're not doing any of this motion. If you're doing that, you're doing it fucking wrong. Get everything tight. What I sometimes advise people to do is squeeze your thighs together and that's gonna make sure you're sat into the seat. So, now we're gonna go into our first working set. I've done my warm-ups now. I'm advanced enough to not do another warm-up. If you need another warm-up, do it. So if, you're, if, you if your program today was 100 kilo, three sets of eight, go and put 80 kilo on. For me, I've done this workout thousands of times. So I know I can go straight into 100 kilo, it's okay for me, so I'm gonna go straight into 100 and I'm gonna do three sets of eight on that weight. So, obviously today, as you can see, I'm training on my own. I've got my trusted cameraman behind the camera, so he can't really be helping me with the weights. So I'll have to be doing this shit on my own today. But when I was doing powerlifting and when I was training heavy, there was no way I was gonna load the bar up on my own, especially if I was doing, if I was doing um, deadlifts, fuck you now. You're going to see deadlifts. I'll have to do them on my own, actually. I don't know, I might get someone to train with me that day. But it's really hard, especially when you're lifting weight on the floor, up and down, and on top of that, you're trying to train. It's really taxing. Also today, the weights are all over the fucking gym. So I'm going to run around the gym just to grab the weights. Okay, first working set. Eight repetitions. Everything stays the same. I know exactly what I'm doing now. When it comes to warm-ups, one to two minutes is more than enough rest. When it comes to your heavier sets, three to five minutes. I reckon I've had about three minutes there. I'm gonna go straight in on my first working set. Eight repetitions. So there again, it's very easy for me. So I'll just rest it on my chest and then press it out. I don't normally rest it for more than three seconds. I held it there an extra second just to show off a little bit. But you get the idea. I'm just training over here. I'm not trying to get stronger. I'm not trying to get bigger. I'm not trying to get leaner. This is just something I enjoy doing. I know I have to tax my body in order for me to look the way I do. I'm happy with the way I look. I'm not trying to do anything. If I grow a little bit, fucking great. You know, if I get a bit smaller, who gives a shit, I ain't bodybuilding. If I get a little bit fatter, I cut my carbs down a little bit. If I want to get up a little bit bigger, I'll increase my fats, I'll increase my protein. It's very simple for me. Always have a plan. You can do this later on in life when you're at my stage where you don't give a fuck about how you look, how much you lift. I've done all that. I'm here to just train, to enjoy it. So why should I go into the gym and kill myself? It's funny because I put some stuff on TikTok recently. Same with Instagram, I put videos of me training. And you see the style of training that I do. It's very explosive, it's very fast. Oh, this guy's not training with enough intensity. He's not training hard enough. Everything looks fucking easy. He's got at least five reps in the tank there. What's the point of even doing this? He should be training a little bit more effectively. Who gives a fuck, bro? I'm training for me. And if I put a video out there, to demonstrate how to train for you guys, I'm doing that to help you for free. If you buy my program, then great. I'll help you even more. But if something like this is gonna help you guys, then just watch it, enjoy it. And if you do wanna make a negative comment, by all means, make one below, because it definitely helps the algorithm. And I don't really give a shit what you guys say, but I do get a lot of criticism for training fast, for training a particular way, 
And I'll say this to those guys, if you want to ever train with me, or you think one day you feel a bit brave and you think, yeah, do you know what, this guy trains a bit too easy, or he's not lifting heavy enough weights, come down, bro, anytime. Come I mean, at the minute I'm in Pattaya, Thailand, I don't know where I'm going to be next month or next week. If you want to train with me, come down, man. I've got no issue with it. I can show you how to train properly. If you go into my old Instagram videos, I don't want to brag. I've done some pretty decent lifts. I'm not going to mention them over here. Go and have a look, you know? This is not my goal right now. My goal is to just educate you guys. This is my business now. I've just started this year. That's why I've started the YouTube. So I'm going to say it again. Share my video, share my shit. I'm trying to grow. But everybody is going through a different walk of life. This is my walk of life at the minute. I'm not here to lift crazy amounts of weight. I'm not here to compete. It used to be back in the days when we were looking at powerlifting videos and like, how much is this guy lifting? What's the national record? What's the local record? What's the qualifying record for this event? What's the qualifying record for, for this? Who gives a shit anymore? I don't fucking care. You know, so for you, for your own goals, keep your own goals in your mind. Don't criticize other people. Don't go on Facebook and say, this guy's doing this wrong. This guy's doing that wrong. You don't know what problems that guy might have. You know, let me give you an example. Someone's wearing elbow sleeves. Oh, he's wearing elbow sleeves. You don't know, the guy might have turned the nice. He might have fucked his shoulder up. You know, he might even have one arm. How the fuck do you know this shit nowadays? But, you know, what I found nowadays is that people are quick to criticize. But by all means, go ahead and do it. And I say this to those people though, if you don't like the criticism, what people are giving on TikTok and Facebook, I don't mind, I'm all open for it. I don't give a shit. If you don't like the criticism, stay away from social media. And if you are gonna make a negative comment on one of my videos, just be prepared for a little bit of backlash. At least give me that. Surely I'm allowed to have a little bit of a backlash. There's none of this, oh, this guy's so pissed off. No, I'm not pissed off. You make a comment, I'm gonna make a comment. It helps the algorithm, helps me grow. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is another set, eight repetitions. Another thing I will mention, what I never used to do when I was training for powerlifting, and that was, if you feel a slight pain, a slight twinge, a little bit of tendonitis, something off in your shoulders, something not right in your hips, anything, cut that session short, get rested, go home, go to the physio, get a massage, do plenty of stretching, there's always next week, you can always come back in next week and finish that session. Last thing you wanna do, is get injured while you're in the gym and then you're fucking out. Before you know it, you know, you're back five, six, seven, eight weeks. You're out of the contest, no more powerlifting for you. You're walking around this in an injury just because you wanted to finish this one particular session. These sessions don't fucking matter. If you're in this for the long haul like I am, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I think almost 25 years I've been training for now. So just come to the gym, any slight niggles, any slight pains, Stop the session right there, cut it short, go home. Personally, I've never really been badly injured like that, but I will be honest with you, if I even felt a slight bit of tendonitis, back in the days, I would push through, I'd muscle through the session, and then I'd be fucked for weeks on end. Now, if that ever happens to me, I'm straight out the door, I'm going home. Okay, so this was, that was set number two. I've got one more set now. Remember, follow your program. Don't do no ego lifting. Don't worry about what people are gonna see on the internet. This is your workout. Get a coach, whether it's me, or whether it's somebody else, follow the program, what this guy's saying. Speaking about the incline bench again, just a couple of things to note, like I've already mentioned, it starts with the ground up. Feet first, ass, hips planted into the bench, get everything tight. What you don't wanna be doing is pulling your shoulders out at the top. And when you go for an extension, about 95% is more than enough. You don't need to, you know, fully lock out at the top. If you see me and you think, oh, this guy's fully locking out, I'm not actually fully locking out. There is a point of tension that's constantly kept, which is around about there, as you can see. So it's a little bit, visually, you might not be able to see it. Certain people look a little bit different, but you know how it feels at the top of the repetition. That's what you want to go for. Everybody's going to be an individual. So I'm just going to do one more set on this. So, also, something I've 
forgot to do because I've been vibing away so much is drink your water. I've got Gatorade in here today. A quick tip as well, when I buy Gatorade or when I buy a bottle of water, especially if you're in a hot country, get one of these flasks. It doesn't sweat. If you're in a hot country, and especially when you're benching, you need your hands to be nice and dry. And you've got a plastic water bottle. And because of the hot weather, the cold water bottle starts sweating and it's dripping everywhere. Your hands are wet. You're grabbing the bar. Things are slipping. You know, it's a nightmare. It's a recipe for disaster. Ready to get injured. You're asking for it. So always buy one of these sweatproof bottles. These are going to be available on my website pretty soon. It's another pun there. Fadiusain.com. I'm just waiting for the shipment. But literally, practice what you preach. And if I'm drinking out of a sweatproof bottle, so should you. If they're available now, while this video is out, the link will be in the description. I'll put everything in there. Last set for me on this. I'm just going to talk through everything one more time. Feet planted. The seat, make sure it's nice and gripped with your inner thighs like this. Make sure you've got that. Have you seen, have you seen the videos online where there's a, a woman squeezing a watermelon between her thighs? Picture that. So make sure everything's tight, hip is down. You don't want to be doing this, hips down. I'm doing this with a mic on, so that's why I'm pulling my shirt down, otherwise I don't give a shit. Right, grab the bar, nice and tight. Get everything locked in. Make sure you go through that mental checklist. So that is my incline bench workout. Comes to an end. I did three sets of eight there. I think I did around about three warm up sets. Everything's fired up now, ready for me to train chest. So this is a compound lift. Always do this first, or maybe second after flat bench, but I would not do this anywhere else in the workout. Don't do this last. Don't drop the weight and do drop sets on this. Don't do no fucking force reps on this. Don't get someone behind you, spotting you, doing all this dangerous shit. This is not the time and place for it. I don't think there's ever time, I don't think there's ever a time and place for someone to spot you. When someone spots you, the only thing they should be doing is passing you the bar. And that's about it. Or giving you the fucking dumbbells. Or taking the bar off you, or taking the dumbbells off you. Nobody should always be behind you doing the repetitions for you. This is very, very dangerous to do that, especially on the incline bench press. So don't advise anything like that and try to do this first or second in the workout. You don't need to do no activation, none of that pec deck fucking activation bullshit. Do this first. This is an explosive exercise. This is a compound lift. Always do this first in your ex. Always do this when you're fresh. Do this first in your workout. And if you want more tips like this, give me a subscribe, give me a follow, like the, like the video comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.